Um, let's get started. Hey everyone, uh, thanks for tuning in. I'm very happy to be here to talk to you guys uh, about Project Harbor. Uh, I'm Daniel, I'm a software engineer from VMware. I'm also a maintainer of Harbor. Today with me is my co-presenter, Wang Yan. Yan, you wanna say hi to the audience? Hi, I'm Yan. Um, I'm also a Harbor maintainer. I work with my family in Harbor team. Okay, thanks Yan. Um, now first, um, because we only have one maintainer session in this coupon, I'll start by giving an introduction to this project uh, for those who are new. Uh, Harbor is an on-prem cloud native registry. We started the project by adding features around the Docker distribution to provide a better uh, experience for managing Docker images. And later with the growth of the uh, user base, more management features were added. Then in another, uh, in a major upgrade, uh, we expand the scope of Harbor from managing only container images to all the OCI uh, cloud native artifacts. And uh, with a great support from the community, Harbor has officially become a, a graduated project in CNCF since last year, which is really exciting. Uh, let's take a look at the key features. Um, Harbor provides the uh, access control for the artifacts. The artifacts are uh, isolated uh, within projects. A user is granted the permission to access the artifacts by being added as members to a project. Um, project is also a unit of management. Admin can uh, assign different policies to projects. For example, um, there's an immutability policy to prevent artifacts from being overridden and quota policy to limit the storage usage of a pro project. And um, the retention policy, which can help you remove the stale artifacts so you don't use all the quota too fast. Um, Harbor also provides powerful features to help you distribute the artifacts across different uh, registries and the cloud. Um, you can use the replication uh, to transfer artifacts to or from different registries. And also the uh, proxy cache, uh, which helps you uh, configure a project as a cache so the client can uh, get the content from a remote registry synchronously. Security has also, uh, I mean, it has always been a big concern for enterprise users. To help users to deal with that, Harbor, Harbor has uh, a, a flexible uh, scanning framework by implementing the adapters. Uh, scanners can be plugged into Harbor and admin can trigger the scanner to scan the image or artifact and view the CVEs in the scan report. Um, Harbor also integrates um, with Notary to support image signing. To enhance security of the workload, admin can set the policies in Harbor to prevent image uh, with uh, you know, high CVE scores or invalid signature from being pulled or deployed. Last but not least, um, with uh, uh, integration with uh, ID managers like LDAP or uh, OIDC providers um, and the mechanisms like uh, webhooks, robot accounts. Um, Harbor can work smoothly as an you know, important part in your CI CD pipeline. Um, as mentioned before, we have a very healthy community. Throughout the years, more than 200 developers working for more than 50 companies have committed code to the repository. Uh, based on the statistics on our uh, storage service, uh, the installer of Harbor has been downloaded for more than 10,000 times, which is a really big number. Uh, we have 12 maintainers coming from five companies and geographically distributed in different countries. Um, I feel extremely happy seeing people with different backgrounds uh, actively making contribution to this project. Once again, I wanna say thank you to the community. You guys are really amazing. Um, having said that, I'm gonna pass the mic to Yan to give us a, a recap about the recent version 2.2 release. Uh, thanks, Daniel. Uh, I'd like to, to give you a brief introduction about the latest major release of Harbor, that is the 2.2. There are two anchor features in this release, uh, system rubber and uh, Metrics. The system level robot is targeted to manage multiple projects with one robot, and the metrics is targeted to 
is post the system and the runtime information of Harvard instance. And for these two features, I will give a detailed explanation in the next two slides. And besides that, it also introduced the, the enemy group support in the OIDC Osmo. If the user, if a member of enemy group, the user will have admin advantage in Harbor. And what's more, Harbor 2.2 extends the broadcast list at GCR, ECR, Azure, and query support. And bump up the Trivi and the Golan version and do some code refactor. So if you'd like to know some details, just refer to the gohub.io to get the latest uh, documentation. Uh, next slide, please, Daniel. Uh, Harbor introduced the first version uh, rubber account in 1.8. And since then, we have been getting a lot of feedbacks from the community. Uh, rubber account enhancement is always concern and discuss in the community. So after the issue assessment, we decided to introduce the Robert version two in Robert 2.2. And what we did for the enhancement, I, look, I just list them in the table. Uh, the first one is the multiple project management. Robert 2.2 introduces the capability for system admin to create System rubber account and uh, the system rubber account allow you to use a rubber account to perform maintenance and the repeated task across all our subset of projects in your hardware instance. But uh, for the version one rubber account, it's it's uh, just uh, limited in into one single project. And the second one is the permissions besides Docker Helm, a uh, chart per push. Um, Rubber version two has six more permissions like uh, read and delete tag, scan image, and so on. Uh, system admin can assign any combination of these permissions to a system level account to perform your desired task through the uh, OCI client or the Harbor API. Uh, next is the edit. In the rubber version one, Harbor issues the GW token as the password of a rubber account and encapsulate all of the information of rubber in, into that token and does not store any of the information into the database. And be, because that, Harbor has to rely on the GW token to judge the access scope and nothing of a rubber can be updated. However, in the rubber version two, instead of, instead of the GW token, Harbor uses the secret as the password and store the access scope, permission list, expiration date into the database so that the user can add them in UI. This is totally not supported in the rubber version one. And next is the security management. In the rubber version two, you can refresh a rubber secrets after it created in the event that you need a new one. This is also a requirement from the community that user wants Harbor to have a way to refresh password of a rubber to meet their company's security strategy. That, that is the token must be rotated periodically. The last one is the prefix definition. Uh, this is another hot topic in the community. Uh, user wants Harbor to have a way to define the rubber prefix. Harbor uses this prefix to distinguish a user account from a, a, a rubber account from a user account. But uh, in rubber version one, the prefix is, is hot coded to rubber dollar. And some users complain like it's hard to escape the dollar character in their automation script. So in version two, Harbor opens a prefix configuration. It can be updated to any specific screen without any restrictions. Um, a next slide, please, Daniel. 
uh, for the matrix, uh, it becomes complexity as the number of hardware components grow. And with that also grow the need to monitor this service around the car to maintain the healthy functionality of hardware. Observability is a key feature for operating a service in production. So in 2.2, Harbor provides a wealthy of metrics exposed where uh, permissors and point and the observability can give a much more in-depth view of what your harbor is doing. You can either gain insight into system performance or identify anomalies during one time. So let's start a demo. Um, uh, first, um, uh, let, okay. me start. let me stop sharing first. Okay. Um, okay. I think you can share a screen. Okay. Uh, the first demo uh, is about the uh, rubber count. As you can see, there is new tag named the rubber counts. And let me create a rubber system level rubber first thing. If you want to this rubber to only cover certain projects or be grounded certain permissions, uh, use the project table to select uh, projects and the permissions you want to assign to the system rubber account. Here, I just uh, select the project one. And after I copy the secret, um, I will do a Docker login with the newly created uh, rubber. And um, upline, I will try to push an image into project one. And then I will try to push an image into project two. You're supposed to get the error message because of the level has no uh, access. So let's back to Harvard to ground the project two to the rubber demo. Uh, after save, um, I will try to push the image to project two again. Um, next is the cover all projects. If you want to use this, secret, this system rubber count to cover all projects, use this option means that the, the, this system rubber count will be able to access all existing and future projects in your hardware instance. I'd say uh, I will create a new project, which name is Project 3. And then I will try to uh, push uh, an image into Project 3 with the same rubber count. Yes. Uh, the next case is to create a tag. I will show add a tag with the rubber. We have already pushed a uh, hello world into Project 1. So now let me use this rubber to add a new tag named demo for the hello world. And let me try to specify the secret at the authentication user and then post the HTTP request. And let's back to Harbor to check the uh, late attacks I created by the rubber account. Yeah. Uh, next, I will show the secret refresh and the prefix. Um, by default, Harbor will generate a new secret randomly, or you can choose to enable manually reciting the secret or entering the new secret. Here, um, I just uh, specify the Harbor one, two, three, four, five as the new secret of this of, of this level account. And then I will try to update the prefix of the rubber to harbor at. Uh, after that, uh, I will do a uh, Docker login with the updated uh, name and secret.
then let's try to pull an image from Harvard with the updated cover. Uh, one last minor thing is about the legacy robots. For the robots that created before 2.2, Harvard will add a legacy label to them. You can still use them as normal, but uh, without any new functionality. So we include users to deprecate this legacy robots and use the robot version one for this time. Okay, let's, this is the demo for um, robot. Um, let's try to let's jump to the mattress demo. Um, before demo, I will give you some background about the showcase. Um, I have already set up a monitoring stack for my running hardware with permissions and uh, Grafana. Uh, Prometheus uh, acts as the storage backend and Grafana as the interface for analyze and virtualization. I will run a script to simulate the high usage of public instance at that particular time. And the script will create 100 projects and do parallel push to the created projects. And as you see, the diagram are being reflected in the Grafana view. I just list the core and registry matches here. After the script starts, you will see the project total count change, as well as the core and registry inflate request ascent because of the parallel push. And this charts can reflect the real time runtime information of your hardware instance. And this information are uh, imports important in the context of resource usage, uh, utilization, and cost control. Um, after the script is done, it will remove all of projects. So you will see the project total count start to descend. Okay, let's all the demo for on the features. I don't know. Uh, I will stop sharing. Come back to you. Um, thanks, Ian, for the wonderful demo. Um, next, uh, I'm going to give you some uh, update about the operator. I recall we gave um, introduction in the previous KubeCon. We want to provide a relatively simple way for the user to deploy a high available full stack hardware. By full stack, I mean all the dependent resources like certificates, storage services database can be deployed with one KubeCon command. For this purpose, we wrap the menial uh, Redis uh, PG circle operators and uh, um, the resource managed by these operators along with the, the Harbor CR will be owned by the uh, Harbor cluster CR. So with the help of a cert manager and ingress controller, uh, all the resources can be managed, ma managed via the uh, Harbor cluster CR. And uh, of course it has the flexibility to be configured to use existing storage services also. Um, le let me show you the demo. Um, Here, after uh, building the images of operator, uh, I use the customize to generate the YAML and install the operator using Kubecto. You can see all the CRDs and row bindings and deployments for the operators are being created. Uh, let's wait for a few seconds before operator is ready. Uh, okay. Uh, if we list the path, um, you can see the path for all the four operators, including Harbor, Menial, uh, Postgres, and Redis. And let's take a look at the manifest YAML file we use to deploy Harbor instance. Uh, it contains the definition for the secret uh, for the admin password, uh, secret for Menial, and certificates 
and the certificates for Harbor. Uh, which will be managed by the third manager. So you provide DNS name and third manager will generate the third. And uh, in the spec of Harbor Cluster CR, there are attributes for each of the components, including database and internal storage services. You can set the size of you know, PV or the uh, replicas to enable HA. Now, if we uh, feed um, this YAML file to a uh, kube Koto apply. Uh, now we created the uh, Harbor cluster CR and we can monitor the status by checking uh, the CR. If we, if we use the dash or wide, uh, you know, we can check the readiness of the storage services as sub components. And it, yep. the reason we can do this is because a search information is populated in the status of uh, Harbor cluster CR. And uh, um, we can see uh, in this uh, namespace, the pods are being created. Menials are ready and Postgres, it, it needs more time. So I did some editing to keep the video short. Yeah, the status of Harbor cluster is healthy now and all the pods are running and we can see there are multiple replicas for the database, Redis, and Medium. So we did that with only one Kubernetes command. Um, and we can use the configure host name and the admin credential to access Harbor and start using it. So uh, at the time the session is recorded, we are still busy ironing out the bugs and bumping up versions. Hopefully uh, by the time you see this session, there's a release candidate for the Harbor operator. And we are also working with community user to add more custom resources for day two operation, which will be included in the future release of the operator. Um, just keep an eye on the uh, Harbor operator repo for the latest update. Okay, now uh, let's go to the version 2.3. Um, previously, we have been constantly evolving and adding new features to Harbor, but from another perspective as user uh, have been using Harbor for a relatively long time. Uh, and as user data such as artifacts, uh, job records uh, grow, uh, we started to see issues in performance, stability, et cetera. Um, we we want to, in version 2.3, we want to refrain from adding too many features, really step back and deal with such a growing pains in this release so that we can, you know, walk longer. And for the performance, we have teamed up with the community users to set up a, a performance working group. We are working together to provide a repeatable uh, way to continuously measure the performance. Um, we are defining the key scenarios, working out scripts to generate data and run automation tests. Uh, we're gonna find the bottlenecks and iteratively provide fix to uh, improve the performance. Uh, you can check the Slack channel we created for this working group and the, the go harbor slash perf repo uh, where we will upload the assets such as uh, scripts, test cases and the reports. Um, Next, as there are more and more uh, community users who are service providers that will provide Harbor as a registry to, the, to their customers, uh, we hear requests to build Harbor for environments with different architecture of CPUs. Uh, we had some good discussion and uh, decided to provide a scalable approach. We will refine the build process of Harbor um, 
to make it more consumable and customize, customizable. Um, and there will be different downstream repos created, uh, each of which will focus on a different architecture. They will provide their separate build and verification process to generate the package of hardware for different environments. And each of them will provide an independent release cycle such that they will not block each other. And currently there are different groups of community developers working on ARM on long soon architectures. Each of them has created the uh, sub repo. And we have from the multi-arc working group to cover the work in this area. You can chime in the Slack channel if you are interested. Um, and of course, uh, there are other work items that are planned. We will verify hover on the IPv6 environment, uh, provide a declarative way to help admin configure hover without having to call the APIs. Um, there has been asked for this for quite a while. I have to say it's not my favorite requirement. And there are quite a few corner cases we need to consider. That's why we keep holding this. But now the proposal has been submitted and you can take a look. Um, as a follow-up for the metric work we did in version 2.2, we will expose uh, more metrics for job service in 2.3. Uh, you will be able to monitor the jobs and the, the number of job queue via promise use. And the maintainers in scanning group are working out a design to extend the uh, schema of scanning reports to show more uh, vulnerabilities or ice bomb information in addition to CVEs. Um, yeah, hopefully in version 2.3, there will be a very concrete design and uh, you know for future implementation. We are also spending substantial effort to finish the API refactor to make sure all the APIs are generated by uh, the new Swagger doc and paying off other debts. As for the timeline, uh, 2.3 will be released on June, July timeframe. Uh, stay tuned. Um, okay, that's all we wanna share in this session. If you wanna know more, there are different ways to be part of the community. Uh, you can com communicate via Slack, mail group, or join the bi-weekly uh, community meetings where you see you know, more information and latest status update. You can also participate in the discussion. Okay, I think that's all for this session. Um, it's a Q and A time, and uh, let's stop it.